Hey Ravens, welcome to ONW Now. I'm Ron Stanley. And I'm Gabby Thomas. In today's show, we'll take a look back at the 8th grade invasion and a recap of the Raven dance team's successful weekend in Orlando. Our very own dance team made history over the weekend. Let's hand it off to Nicole Day for the story. This past weekend, the Varsity Raven dance team traveled to Orlando, Florida to compete in the annual NDA High School Nationals. Their palm routine placed third, while they took home first with team performance, scoring a 92.20, and first in jazz with a score of 93.60. They received numerous awards, including Best in Category, Technical Excellence, and Superior Showmanship for their team performance routine, the Large Varsity Jazz Choreography Award, and Superior Showmanship for Palm. At the end of awards, they were announced as the 2018 Grand Champions of the entire competition. This is the second year in a row that the Raven Dance Team triple titled, adding banner number 11 to the East Gym. Congratulations to RDT on their achievements. For ONW Now, this has been Nicole Day. Last week, ONW held its 8th grade transition day to welcome the class of 2022. Let's take it to Ainsley Heisey to give us a scoop. Last Wednesday, ONW held its annual 8th grade transition day where all feeding middle schools come and visit the Great Northwest. Students had an exhilarating day going from class to class learning about electives, sports, theater, and core classes for freshman year. Uh, yeah, it was pretty dope. Um, I mean, you kind of learned like what it's going to be like in high school, like what you're going to go through, um, some of that. The link leaders took charge and made the transition easier for all of the 8th graders involved. What are you most excited for for high school? Uh, meeting new people. The 8th graders got to talk with current teachers, administrators, and high school students about their experience here at ONW. Can't wait to be here next year. It's going to be good. The new Ravens are energetic and excited for their freshman year. Okay, and we're here at the 8th grade transition day, and we're closing out, and we're just so excited to see all these future Ravens in the halls. Back to the desk. <laughs> here at Lathan Northwest, we have a variety of different clubs. Mallory McDonald gives us a look at one of the newest clubs here at ONW. So last fall, um, I was... I, I, I did know that um, Mr. Carter uh, has played Ultimate Frisbee in the past, and so I was really getting into it, and I was getting really passionate about it. And so I asked him, hey, would you help me um, start this Ultimate Frisbee club? And so uh, to get a club started, you usually have to get a group of friends who are interested in the club and um, give a presentation to administration about what it's going to be about and give a general overview about it. Ultimate Frisbee, you know, uh, flew into my hands and so uh, I just started running with it and started going along with it. A person can join by um, either just coming on Saturdays and showing up or they can DM us on our Twitter uh, which is at ONW Ultimate and ask me when the dates are for everything. It's basically come when you want if you want. The meetings are Saturday 3 to 5 starting after spring break. I think the biggest challenges of Ultimate Frisbee would have to be you know, fighting against the wind. Um, the wind is single-handedly the biggest adversary of any Ultimate Frisbee player. So the field is it, it's set up a lot like a football field and we play on 60 yards and then we have 20 yard end zones depending on what league you play in but basically the rules are you start with a kickoff and you throw the Frisbee yelling Ultimate before you, all, you throw the Frisbee all the way down to the other side of the field to the receiving team and then they basically they, once they catch it, they can't move, and the objective is to get it to the other end zone without dropping it. There are actually there are no referees, so it's kind of like a call your own fouls type of thing. Um, usually like seven to nine guys on a team uh, going from end zone to end zone. First one to seven is usually how they score it. Make sure you drink water before, because um, you're going to be running a lot. Hmm. My ultimate goal, ha ha ha, pun intended. Um, my ultimate goal for the club is to uh, expand it basically as much as I can. Uh, I want to get it to where we're playing other schools in the district, if they had other clubs, and then maybe playing other schools in other districts, like a tournament type thing, once we get there. Come to Ultimate Frisbee Club. If interested in joining the Ultimate Frisbee Club, there will be an informational meeting during Lunch A on Friday in room 2219. 
The winter sports season has been put to bed and is in hibernation. Let's cuddle up next to the game day crew for a recap of Raven Winter Sports. Hey Ravens, welcome back to Game Day Northwest. I'm Melissa Clinton alongside Ryan Atchison. Today we have special recaps on winter sports and highlights from Boys and Girls Substate. First, let's send it to Rosie Klossner and Ryan Atchison for the Swim and Dive season summary. With the boys' swim and dive season coming to an end, seniors Stephen Grable and Bradley Davis gave an inside scoop of the team's success this year. This season was um, ran by guys that I've known from uh, since I was freshman. We've grown up in the system, and uh, because we didn't have a new coach this season, we were able to create a, a culture that I, I can be really proud of as a senior. This season all three of us divers uh, were seniors so we felt like we needed um, to strive to do better than the past two seasons and also our coach uh, this was his last year he retired this year so we felt like uh, you know we had to make that D to make it a strong memorable last season. As many seniors will depart the leadership shown will stay with the team for years to come and has even turned the heads of opposing teams. We've really cultivated a team that has wanted to work their butt off and um, just being able to um, have other teams that looked at us and said, you know, these guys are beating us, but they're great guys and we're rooting for them because they, they're nice guys, because they're sportsmanlike, because um, our, our team was just the kind of hardworking team that other teams can look to. Even though the seniors will be missed, they wish the underclassmen the best. To the underclassmen, I would say um, to make sure to have a strong finish to the end of your high school career. And also, um, don't take anything for granted. For Stephen and Bradley, it may not be the end of careers quite yet. Well, I plan on attending the University of Kansas, and they have club diving. So I, I um, expect to dive a little bit there. I got an offer recently to swim at University of Missouri-St. Louis. And beyond that, um, I... I, won't know, I, I don't know until um, uh, I decide whether I want to swim there or just go to K-State. For Game Day Northwest, this has been Rosie Klausner and Ryan Atchison. Congrats to Bradley Davis for placing second in the one-meter dive and Stephen Graybill breaking a new school record in the 100-yard fly. Congratulations on a fantastic season, guys. The wrestling team has also had a sensational meets throughout the season. Let's send it to Andrew Tracy for the story. Um, my season ended with a 40-4 and four record as a sophomore, and I won five tournaments. Olathe Northwest Wrestling had a constructive season with two wrestlers placing in state. Um, I was pretty proud of taking fourth at state as a sophomore, but I wish I could have done a little bit better, but it was still pretty cool with only one other on W Kid placing. And the team struggled, however, with a loss of star wrestler Kavion due to an injury, but took the struggle and turned this into a huge turnaround. Um, well, I, had, I probably had a lot more probably around 10 times more emotional pain through the season than physical pain. Just having to sit out on the sidelines and seeing guys that you know you can beat and you beat last year that are going out there and winning and you're like, I can, I can do that too, but I, I just have to sit and watch. So um, finally winning that last match and um, taking out a guy that a lot of people had said was going to uh, kind of destroy me at regionals, um, in the regional finals. But uh, taking him out and uh, ending my season like that really kind of solidified the fact that um, I'm a competitor, I like to I like to compete, and that no one can stop you, you know. With 10 senior wrestlers mentoring and teaching the younger competitors so that they can grow into more dominant wrestlers in the future. I think we've got a, we, we've got kind of a halfway young, halfway old team. We're, we're graduating 10, um, 10 seniors this year. Going to be, there's going to be a little bit of a hole left when we leave, but We've got young guys that um, are on the come up and they're ready to step up. Step up. Olathe Northwest wrestlers are happy with the result of this season and look to build and expand into future seasons and to continue to dominate on the mat. This past week, both boys and girls basketball teams squared off in the sub-state final for a shot at the state tournament. First off, the boys as D1 football commit to KU, Jack Parks wins the tip. Parks finds Waters down low and gets it off the backboard for a two-pointer. Later, uh, the Hawks would answer with a drive and a kick out for a three-pointer and knocks it down. And then Kyle Schieber pulls up for a three and knocks it down for his Ravens. The late the East will not back away as they drive to the best end and pass out to the wing, and it is good for three. On the inbound play, KT Ramey, the sophomore, shoots a three and splashes it and knocks it down as the Hawks increase their lead. The Ravens did all they could, but fell short 60-42 to, to the Hawks. 
In the first quarter, a drive by Hannah Black knocks leading scorer of the Sunflower League 20.2 points per game Sarah Beth out of the game. A drive by Curry and an acrobatic save by Jordan Nabar to Kappelman for an easy layup. Northwest ties it up to four. Liz Thomas shoots a three and a rebound by Curry will give it two easy points. With time expiring and the game tied, Curry drives and misses a layup. 40-40 heading to overtime. Curry did all she could to keep the game close, driving to the basket for two. A drive to the basketball and no good Ravens lose by two at home. The girls did all they could without Sarah Beth Gilner. Thank you to seniors as well. Although they fell short, both teams had a great season, and congratulations to both squads. That's all we have for Game Day Northwest. Thank you to all the seniors who fought so hard for our teams this season. Next week, we will have summaries for the bowling and basketball teams. Now, back to the desk. O&W's business classes simulated a shark tank with their students, where the students learned presentation skills through creating a product to showcase for the sharks in hopes of getting an investment from them. The project is to kind of give students a chance to be an entrepreneur for a little bit and they can see what it's like to create their own product and kind of run their own business. So they come up with a brand new toy idea. Um, we do market research and they make surveys that they give to elementary students. They research and get everything ready to actually pitch in front of a panel of sharks in our shark tank. That's all for this week's edition of o &W Now Ravens. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at o &W underscore Raven Daily and on Snapchat at o &W Now. For the Raven Daily, this has been Rowan Stanley and Gabby Thomas. Don't forget to catch up on tomorrow's episode of the Raven Minute, and we'll see you on next week's edition of o &W Now.